Hubble's Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, or STIS, has capabilities like searching for black holes and looking at the atmospheres of planets orbiting other stars. After STIS had a power failure in 2004, the Hubble team was tasked with replacing STIS's damaged electronics boards on the final servicing mission in 2009, which would turn out to be a memorable day for everyone involved. So for about two years, I spent almost every day with the EVA team, the four crew members. We practiced that repair many, many times, and we had practiced it in the water start to finish in the pool many times. We spent hours and days and weeks and months going through what if this bolt fails? Uh, what if the cable doesn't mate? So I felt that we had covered, you know, as much as we could have thought of going into this, this EVA. So we came in to work here at, at the Space Telescope Operations Control Center at Goddard. Our mechanical response team was was watching the EVA in a conference room in Building 29. I was located down at Johnson Space Center, along with the servicing mission manager. The day started out really well. You know, I was I was trying to make it a perfect day, no problems. So they get to the section where they have to remove the handrail on STIS. And you have to remove this handrail. That was designed actually to help remove and install the entire instrument um, in order to access the electronics board underneath. And we watched Mike Massimino attempt to do a rather simple task. All he had to do was remove four screws from a handrail. And so the two screws at the top of the handrail came off fine. The one on the bottom left comes out fine. I go to the bottom right. We could see the pistol grip tool spinning in the bolt head, and the bolt wasn't coming out. I don't want to strip the thing. Oh my god. Um, that was the first thing, you know, it's what are we going to do because this is a, a showstopper right here. For a while, probably about an hour or so, we were trying different bits on the end of the power tool and we were trying all kinds of things. You know, and one thing that crossed my mind was, what would you do? What would you do at home? You know, what would you do in your garage? You know, and I was thinking back to my garage, you know, and sometimes what would I do, you know, and I just kind of, you know, use the brute force, you know, so I thought, you know, what about just trying to break it? It, it didn't even occur to a lot of us just because it's something that you're not really ever trained to do or think of. So one of the things I did was I called back to James Cooper back here at Goddard. James Cooper called us on the speakerphone and said, hey guys, what are you, you're watching this, right? And we said, yeah, yeah, of course. We found out we did have a mock-up of the STIS front panel with the handrail on it. We came up with a quick plan. Bill Mitchell said, I, I've got two handrails inside the clean room. And Ken Dickinson and I came up with a plan for how to rig up the test. So we scattered into the building to get all the materials we were going to need. Well, it was a Sunday. Nobody was around. So I, I'm, you know, I'm literally running through the halls, and I, I run to where the techs would be, and I find a guy, Gene McCallicker, who would happen to be in the building working on another project. So he said, what do you need? He, he seemed to pick up on my body language before I even asked my question. I told him, I need a, a torque wrench, and uh, I need a, a, a digital fish scale. He takes off to go get it. I go to 190. Ken Dickinson's already in there, and within minutes, Bill Mitchell comes busting through the door, carrying the handrail, still in his bunny suit and his clean room garment. We get the handrail all set up, everything's ready to go. We text a couple pictures back and forth. James gives us the green light, and Gene stands up on the table and starts pulling the handrail. And right when he got to 60 pounds, it snapped. The, actually, the bolt went flying. Once we'd done that test, then I got on our communication loops and called it to uh, Jim Corbo. So ultimately, you know, James came back and said, you know, it'll take about 60 pounds of force for them to break it off. So Goddard had done this task, fed the information to us. We talked to the flight director about it to get him comfortable. Okay, Mass, you copy that. 60 yep. pounds linear at the top of the handrail to bust off that bottom bolt. I, I think you've got that in you. Working, Troy. I knew I could do that. What if he pulls it off and there's debris? What if he pulls off the handrail and there's a sharp edge? What if he, it takes a lot of force and it comes back and hits him? Mike Massimino was able to put some tape over the head of the bolt to contain debris that, that might go flying. And so I taped it as best I could, and Boyner was with me helping me to tape that thing. And then. Spanish Houston, we don't have video right now, but uh, we're ready. Okay, Mass, you have a go. Here we go. Stop. Dispose the back, please. Everyone erupted in cheers. Uh, because when he pulled it off, he didn't see any debris, um, and he knew not to touch the, the potential sharp edges, and then we could just put that fastener capture plate on and complete the STIS task. The rest of the repair went fairly well. STIS, I mean, it was fine, actually, and, uh, and STIS is working. That 
one or two hours that I worked on breaking the handrail, that task, that very well could go down as a highlight of my career. So the, the Goddard team did a, did a great job and, and I'm forever in their debt. That day, the Hubble team really showcased their teamwork and problem-solving skills. But the past 25 years of Hubble operations are full of individuals stepping up to tackle seemingly insurmountable obstacles. So stay tuned for more Hubble Memorable Moments.